The goal of this Fall Essentials video is to show you at least one piece of clothing or something you can carry on your body that you have not seen before. And we're ranking it from beginner to intermediate. Advanced. What is something that everybody can wear versus something only the most seasoned, daring, and sometimes rich people can wear. My name is Michael Michael Motorcycle, and today we are going to be revving up your engines and looking at some of the coolest Fall Essentials that I could possibly find. Although I do have one problem, and I am deeply sorry. I must apologize for this problem. This double denim fit that I'm wearing doesn't particularly work Work. It's not the most beautiful outfit to wear on a Fall Essentials video, but the reason I'm wearing this jacket because this is the jacket from my clothing brand, the Prologue from the Iron Snail. And herein lies the problem. The Prologue is coming out both in indigo and black at the end of October. I will be giving you dramatically more information on the other channel that I have, the Tale of the Iron Snail. I know I haven't posted a video ever, but trust me. Along with the Prologue jacket, there is the Mammoth jacket. I hope it to be one of the greatest wool jackets ever made of all time, but it's a lot of money. So I was hoping that this would be the the greatest Fall Essentials video of all time. Are we okay? I, the possibility of me affording all of these clothes with Iron Snail revenue was possible until I bought 200 jackets and 500 yards of wool and levers and pulleys and stuff like that for the clothes. So I'm sorry for that, but more information coming very soon. Thank you for listening to me. Okie dokie, so there are like 50 things on this list, so we're gonna go through everything rather briefly, but number one is the most requested, what are you wearing, Michael? I love that sweater. Where did you get that sweater, Michael? And it's from the beginning list. It is LL Bean's organic roll neck cable knit sweater. Then on the other end of the spectrum, one of my most complimented jackets, besides the prologue, of course, the Barracuda G9 Harrington jacket. This is one of the most famous jackets of all time. I did a whole video about it. Absolutely phenomenal. And it makes you look like you have very long legs because of the ribbed hem. We have something from Koss, which I don't personally own and never have owned myself, but my good friend Brendan owns it. It is the felted wool jacket. You will probably like it unless you have the wool bug where you need to know every single speck of that wool. But even when Brendan wore it, I thought it was a much more expensive jacket than it actually was. Then if someone said to me, Michael, I'm looking for a jacket that I can just wear every day. I don't want to dress it up, but I need to be able to wear it every single single day in the fall, no matter what the weather. I would recommend three jackets, the last one being the most all year round jacket that you could pull off. Obviously, Carhartt lined Detroit jacket. I would probably go vintage, but if Carhartt's not your game, you wanna be more unique and flavorful, you can go the LC King route and get the lined denim chore coat or barn coat. I forget what they call it. And then finally, the jacket that I would say can do it all the most, mainly because it has a hood, but also because it does have a wool lining, is LL Bean's original Baxter State Parka. Wool lined, has a hood, and the one that I like the most, the patched one that's a little unique, has a very cool flavor and it's on sale. Now, if you're looking for a wool sweater at a bargain, again, I'd still recommend obviously vintage or thrifting or eBay or Depop, but L.L. Bean still makes some heat. Specifically, I'm talking about their rag wool sweater and I think they have a Norwegian one. Pleated pants obviously are now in fashion, wider pleater pants, which L.L. Bean has been making for a while. There's also a brand P & Co that makes them. This will all be in the description. Look for the carrot link. There'll be pictures of everything you can click on so you don't have to search for everything. And then the last jacket jacket on the beginner list is actually a down jacket so this could technically be in the winter video. It's from American Trench and I believe it is made in Boston or designed in Boston. It's called specifically the American Trench down jacket. Not that creative with the name. We are frankly losing light at a rapid pace so I'm gonna play a game called how deep into the woods can Michael go before it's pitch black and the trail is hard to see. And now we get into the famed intermediate level. This is where 99% of people are. I am in this list, but my job does allow me to go to the advanced level sometimes, which is pretty cool. You're a wizard, Harry. Remember that movie, Harry Potter? I'm assuming the first time Harry had to shave, he knew exactly what brand he was going to pick. It makes total sense as to why Harry would get into Harry's razors, but there's a few other things he may also love about the brand. Harry's razors are made in their own German blade factory where they perfectly balance quality and price. Of course, other blades out there are more expensive, but those brands are charging more because they can, not because they should or even have to. What's up with that? Harry Potter does not like being ripped off. Harry's also offers a fair price for everyone. There is no pink tax. Women's razors aren't more expensive. I remember my first time shaving. I pressed thine razor against my cheek and wished it was Harry's being sent to me. And I got Harry's trial kit right here. Normally a $13 value, but this time it's different because the iron snail is here. So check out the link in my description and this $13 value you can get for just $5 to see if you like it. I think personally, you'd like it. That's just me and Harry Potter. 
Thank you, Harry's, for sponsoring this video. What good would an intermediate fall list be without talking about overcoats right away? But overcoats to me are like the biggest mess in outerwear because the price goes up so fast because you're just using so much fabric to make them. But off the top, I would recommend Shot for the lowest price to quality ratio. Or I would recommend Shot because they have good quality. SCH Kelly starts to creep up there, but their stuff is insane and their tailoring is beautiful. I can wax poetically about SCH Kelly for years straight without taking a breath or even a sip of water, it'd be easy for me. Wise makes some really cool stuff in New York, which I really like, but honestly, the secret to overcoats is going vintage and tailoring because the price runs up so quickly, but if you go vintage and you search on eBay for kersey wool, melt and wool, heavy wool overcoat or something like that, get the chest correct and the shoulders correct, and then tailor it to how you like. In terms of my most worn fall jacket, hands down, has to go to the Filson Mackinac work jacket. Fits in any scenario, is great in the winter or the fall. That is a beautiful all around jacket. Could also be in the beginner level. Just also want to shout out, Filson did a collaboration with, I forget his name, but his initials are CS, with bags, the traveler bag and everything. Absolutely stunning quality, colors, everything, except the price. Now I already have two videos in the can on wax jackets, so I'm not gonna go through the Filsons, the Barbers and everything like that. I already did videos on those, but I. I do want to say the Gnu. It's Gnu, isn't it? Jacket looks fantastic. If you really want a warm wax jacket, it is 32 ounce wool lining, which is heavier than most jackets in general. And it has quilted satin sleeves, so maybe it won't breathe the best, but holy. You probably know about this brand as well, but you should give it a second look if you haven't already. Lewis Leathers, their Corsair number 60. I tried to buy it in college, found out I didn't have enough money, had to cancel my order. They were very nice and said, maybe one day, Michael, you can get it. Now, obviously, SCH Kelly is on this list again. I'm just a huge fan of the brand, but their trousers, their wool trousers, their corduroy trousers, everything. This is another item though, I would say you should probably thrift it and save a ton of money and get them tailored. That's what I did with some pants I just got. Also, what is fall without flannels? The kind of flagship brand for flannels is of course Ironheart, but those are like $350 flannels. I have a flannel from UES and recently I listened to a podcast with Carl Murawski. Great podcast, by the way. I binged like five episodes in a row. UES flannels. Carl says it perfectly. They are half the price, but not half the quality. A UES flannel will take you to the moon. It is unbelievable quality, very thick, and gets complimented all the time. Not that that should matter to people like us. There's regular working men, you know? So we're pretty chill about it. If you're looking for a hoodie, I did this video before and deleted it, but in that video, I was wearing the Wonder Looper Pullover Hoodie 701 GSM Double Heavyweight French Terry. Wonder Looper, essentially, if you don't know about it, it is run by Bayzad and his wife, Riza, also employees of Naked and Famous, AKA the denim company that does the most extreme, crazy denims. They know fibers, they know fabric, they know how to make insane things. And that is exactly what they do with Wonder Looper. All of their shirts, sweatshirts, pants, whatever, have something crazy about them. And this is by far the heaviest hoodie that you will probably ever feel. It is an actual tank. But either way, that leads us into fleece. A Munson makes the Hero Wool Fleece. I think the durability is good enough to last you forever, but I haven't been able to find a true comparison of long-term durability between polyester fleece and wool fleece is an interesting topic though, if any scientists are watching this video. Now, Amundsen is going to be all throughout this video in general. I love their stuff, but their white eagle jacket is a very cool alternative to a deck jacket or some line jacket like that. In terms of sweaters, we have Harley of Scotland, who their main thing, they're one of those brands that makes clothes for all these other super expensive brands, but they do have their own lines. Then we have Taylor Sitch. Their wool sweaters I've had have always been nice. They do use a very soft, thinner wool, so they're comfy to wear, but they're not as durable as a heavier wool sweater. Last two pieces, before we go into a footwear bonanza to cap out the intermediate level. One is this 1940s recreation sweater from BRUT. What I love about the sweater is the long hem that is made so you can tuck it in. That was popular with motorcycle sweaters. Knickerbocker is also on this list with their Cotton Clark shirt. This is just a plain flannel. Really, I put it on this list because most people I feel like when they're looking for a flannel, they're not looking for the definition of flannel. They're looking for a plaid shirt in terms of style. Knickerbocker makes a beautiful brushed twill flannel for all intents and purposes without the plaid. Okay, it's getting dark. I have to get back to my car, but we're almost there. All the boots on this list really follow a similar DNA, except two boots, but I really like the style of Italian leather hiking boots. There's a brand called DMA, their Rocha Basso boot. I'm, I'm probably saying that completely wrong, but it's an incredible boot, and I like that it has a rubber rand to protect your feet if you're going through mud or rain or something like that. Also, of course, Danner fits into the style really, really well. The Danner Ridge is what I like the best, and specifically, I like the Danner Ridge X Taylor Stitch collaboration. There's kind of been a recent scandal with Danner because Roseanneville cut a pair of Danners in half, and it was, I think confetti 
or something terrible flew out. While we're in that same vein, the boots that I'm wearing today are a collaboration between Knickerbocker and Frat Cap that I thought was an only one-time collaboration, but apparently it's not. I think they sold out again, but you can always check out Frat Cap's website. The next shoe on this list is a shoe that I think if I got it, I would be cursed to being that guy that likes the way it looks from the side. But if I look down, I think what an ugly, weirdly shaped shoe. Para boot, Michael. Knickerbocker does make a cheaper one, I think by 200 bucks. Okay, welcome to the advanced section of the video. The craziest pieces I could find, honestly, some of them are not that crazy pieces, so kind of intermediate too, but this is where the craziest stuff lives. You probably know this brand by Moose Brand, but it's actually called The Leather Shop, and it's their Expedition bag. It's an $1,800 bag that I don't think anyone would ever use on an expedition. It is probably incredibly heavy, but boy, oh boy, is it beautiful. Reese Cooper, specifically their corduroy red hunting jacket. I think that goes bananas. But they also have a lanier boot, which is very cool. I probably would never ever hike with it, but it looks like something I would hike with. But something I'm looking at that creeps me out a little bit because of all the holes is the Merrill Hydro Runner mid-level with a Gore-Tex sock in it. What a weird, looking shoe. And Amundsen, of course, is back on this list. This is a sneaker, I feel like it's really tough to construct a sneaker in an old world way with a Blake Stitch or a Goodyear Welt, Norwegian Welt, whatever it may be. I feel like it never truly blends. And Amundsen came as close as I have ever seen with their Vagabond suede sneakers. Amundsen Mountain Mucks Wool Loden. They have Wool Loden ones. They also have Wax Canvas ones. They also have them without gators. Very cool, very loud. Amundsen is such a effing cool brand. Next up is this reproduction wool hunting jacket made in Japan by John Bull. Before we get to the grand finale, I highly suggest you check out any single thing that the brand Yucatan makes. I wanna call attention to the Sierra wingtip boots with strap. They are crazy, they are loud, but beautifully made. I love them. Then we hop over to one of the first products I ever reviewed, but we should really do a redo to that review because the quality of this jacket has just gotten even better than it already was. The Free Note Cloth Riders Jacket RJ2. And then we hop over to the brand Story M FG. Most of the stuff I feel like I would love to order and then once I get it be like why would I ever wear something that fits like this. They do really cool natural dyes, hand dyes, hand weaving, hand knitting. So the spinning jumper I think is very cool and something that I would wear is their Tuesday jacket in indigo. And finally we go back to BRUT specifically their entire rework collection. This is where I think the brand really shines because they take barber, they take Filson, they take burlap sacks and they make them into essentially they crop them but all of their stuff looks absolutely amazing at that level. But anyway, sorry that it's pitch black. I cannot control the sun. I have to go. I, I've been trying this new trend called overbooking myself and spreading myself way too thin. It's going pretty well. But I will see you all very, very soon when we climb a mountain in uh, PNW boots.